Welcome to Lanyap, a program about events, issues, and people. I'm Corey Crow. I'm joined today by Matt Cortman. And uh, today we're going to learn a little more about the ivory billed woodpecker. Matt, thanks for joining us today on Lanyap. Thank you, Corey. So thrilled to be here. Well, it's good to have you here today. And um, it is uh, also good to. Um, you've got some good news. Let, let's yeah. tell folks um, what you know about the ivory bill. All right, so the ivory bill woodpecker, the last known large population, was in the Singer Tract of northeast Louisiana in Madison Parish through the 40s. Uh, and our team, Mission Ivory Bill, has uh, found the ivory bills again on Tinsaw. So long story short, you, your audience might know that the ivory bill is in the news because United States Fish and Wildlife Service, they administer the Endangered Species Act. September of 2021, they proposed delisting the ivory bill, quote, due to extinction, close quote. So our group spearheaded the opposition to that for two reasons. One, we know the ivory bill is not extinct. But two, and I hate to play the lawyer card, but uh, it would have been premature to declare the ivory bill extinct. So the good news is... Fish and Wildlife Service has decided not to declare the ivory bill extinct. Uh, and the reason we know that is statutorily and regulatory. If they wanted to change the status of the ivory bill from endangered to extinct, they would have had to have done that no later than 18 months after the proposal of the rule. I know I'm losing your audience, but <laughs> that time expired no later than April 1 of 2023. So, so, so just summing up on that, we think it was an unscientific proposal uh, made by perhaps initiated by someone who's no longer in the service. Honestly, we don't, we can't know what happened because there hasn't been much transparency. But the good news is conservation science prevailed, and the ivory bill will remain on the Endangered Species Act list, which is very important here in Northeast Louisiana. My wife and I, Lauren, we have a nature ministry, which means we're dominionists. We're not environmentalists, which means that we think that man, of course, is the most important aspect of nature and that we were given uh, the natural heritage uh, as a gift of God, and it's our duty to protect it, but man comes first. So that's a long way of me saying that we're happy to say that as to public land, right, the ivory bill's habitat the bottomland hardwood forests will remain protected. We're in, but people want to do with their private land is up to them. All right. Um, we're talking about a big woodpecker. Yes. How big is an ivory bill woodpecker? The ivory, we have two large woodpeckers, the ivory bill and then the pileated, P-I-L-E-A-T-E-D. Both of them are about crow size. The ivory bill is a little larger at 21 inches. Uh, the pileated averages 19 inches, and the ivory bill's wingspan is longer. It's about 30 inches. So it's a very big woodpecker. It's Again, it's it's twice the size of any other woodpecker other than the pileated woodpecker. The um, ivory bill woodpecker uh, apparently likes to hide, and it's been doing a great job of hide and seek. And you tell me that the reason we don't see them is it's they, they're really deep in the woods. That's a great point. So the, in 1885, there were two types of ivory bill woodpeckers. There were loud ivory bill woodpeckers, and then there were silent ivory bill woodpeckers. And there was hunting pressure on the ivory bill, both for sustenance and probably more importantly and sadly, as it became apparent that the ivory bill numbers were going down, there was a demand for specimens from both museums and uh, collectors. We shot the last one, right? Well, that that so there are two theories as to Again, I want to stress the ivory bill isn't extinct, but there are two theories as to the the numbers are definitely down from, say, 1850. Uh, and w there are two theories. One is habitat destruction, and then the other is hunting pressure. And, of course, as with everything, it's a mixture of both. Uh, but the habitat has been improving. We know the ivory bills were, for instance, in the Singer Track, which is, again, now Tinsaw River National Wildlife Refuge. We know they were in there undisputedly through the 40s, and the habitat has gotten nothing but better over these years. The, the ivory bill is actually a very uh, hopeful conservation story. Um, uh, I want to ask you about the ivory bill. Have you seen an ivory bill woodpecker? I've seen the ivory bill woodpecker five times. Now, mind you, uh, I've probably searched for the ivory bill. I do this full time, right, uh, our ivory bill work. Uh, and we've done that full time since I saw a pair on March 10 in 2019. And <clears throat> I can't disclose that location other than to say it's someplace in Louisiana. And the reason I can't disclose it 
is I brought in the National Aviary from Pittsburgh because uh, I'm not, um, this isn't a brag to say, I'm as good at England as identify, identifying Louisiana birds because I was taught as a child by Dr. Tom Key here at then NLU. I took courses when I was eight. But anyhow, the point of the story is, so we knew that, I knew the Irie Bills and, and other people did, knew that they were, I'll just say location, Louisiana location A. And so to get a scientific institution to come in and document them, I reached out to the National Aviary in Pittsburgh. They came down and I'm happy to say they've produced excellent evidence. They've got a good drone video and there's some good trail cams, which are ivory bill woodpeckers. Um, in 2010, there was an ivory bill recovery plan uh, that was based on something. Uh, tell me why why the plan in 2010 was was valid, and then uh, here we are uh, recently, and they're going to uh, they were trying to declare the bird extinct. That's a great question. So just very briefly. Uh, in 2004 and five, the ivory bill was, I don't like the term, but was rediscovered. So Fish and Wildlife Service unambiguously found the ivory bill was still existed in Arkansas as per their April 2005 press release. Then there was some pushback uh, in the birding world. And again, just want to separate. There's the hobby birdists, of which I'm one. Uh, I've been since I'm seven. And those, that's, that world has bird records committee. And then there's conservation science, which is Fish and Wildlife Service. So anyhow, 2005, Fish and Wildlife Service accepted that the ivory bill still exists based on the evidence presented to them. And then there was some pushback in the birding community, but that was all resolved before 2010 in Appendix B as in boy with that ivory bill recovery plan where Fish and Wildlife Service rejected all those uh, arguments. Matt Cortman's with us today. Uh, Matt, what's the name of your organization and how do folks find out more about uh, what you're doing and uh, the research going into the ivory-billed woodpecker? Thank you so much for that, Corey. We, we're just forming Bayou Salt and Light as a community enrichment ministry. The easiest way to reach me is Matt, M-A-T-T, at Mission Ivory Bill. Org. We're having a foundational celebration at 224 Auburn Avenue tomorrow night at 6, and we'll talk about the Ivory Bill. That's Grace Covenant Baptist Church in Monroe, 6 o'clock tomorrow night. That's Matt Cortman, Bayou Salt and Light, uh, the name of the group. You can find out more by looking up Mission Ivory Bill and by heading to our website at KEDM.org. <laughs>